Massachusetts on Sunday, June 11, 2023. Lucas will come forward as he reads the call to worship and then will continue in the spirit and in the presence of worship this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today's call to worship is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verses 9 and 10. I took you from the ends of the earth. From its farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be in dismay, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. May God bless the reading of his word. Savior and the shepherd who guides our lives. 
Lord. Hear our prayer. Indeed, we look at the glory, we look at the beauty, and we know there is much to celebrate. And we just have added just a little bit to that celebration on this morning as we gather in worship. But we also know that there are challenges in our world that overwhelm us. We pray that you would manifest your truth, your light, and your love. We pray for the world leaders of nations that there would be a turning of their attention, their hearts, to truly offer leadership that's best not only for their countries, but also for their neighbors. So we especially pray for peace in war torn areas of this world. We think especially of Ukraine and of Yemen as two examples, and there's so much strife. Gracious God, we pray for an outpouring of your wisdom and your light to turn hearts towards love and peace. Lord, and we also continue to pray for the challenges that we bear witness to in and throughout our world. Ongoing challenge of living in and through now an endemic called COVID. Ongoing challenges as we observe the natural phenomena of fires in Canada that are overtaking acres and acres of forests, and we pray for the people who fight against these fires to keep them safe, and we pray for the people and their homes and businesses as they are threatened by the fires. Pour out your grace. We would be so bold as to send rain to help extinguish these fires. But most important, all who are impacted by this unfolding phenomena and other challenges within our world would know your grace, your love, and your presence and be sustained and strengthened by your living grace. Lord, hear our prayer. And just as we pray in a global way, we also pray within our church family. We are very mindful of the number of people who are recovering from surgery, those who are facing surgery. We go in cycles as a church family. And whatever the concern on a medical basis, we give you thanks for the healing that has been experienced, for being restored, for the return of those who can be with us this morning after a recovery, and your blessing and your healing and the help of the medical community. For these in our presence and also for those that we know, we praise you for healing. Together we praise God. And we continue to be faithful to remember individuals, not only within the circle of our church family, but also the broader circle of our lives, our own extended families, our neighbors, the people that we work with. You know our heart. You have taught us that if we don't know the words to say, that Jesus, as the perfect mediator, will listen to our heart and pray for us. Therefore, in a moment of silence, we open our hearts to you, and we pray that each person and the concerns that we carry will be heard by Jesus, who will present those individuals before God, and that the gentle, gentle, powerful presence of the Spirit will touch the lives of those we carry in our hearts. Lord, Hear our prayer. unite us now as we offer the prayer that you taught your disciples when together we say, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day 